What's up, everybody? Here we are on the Bench Sheet Podcast at the Black Valve Coliseum. We're here. If you want your media done by anybody, come to Black Valve Media. They do the best job. And if you're also happen to be looking for a, you know, a marketing company, who do we go to, Kev? Edelmade out of Cincinnati. Uh, the beautiful logos you see here, all of our uh, photos done by the wonderful... Edelmade. Also our name, too. We yes. Them in fact, it. they did come up with the name, so credit to them. Two claps for them. Or um, golf clap. I'm George Niang. This is my co-host, the grill guy, Kevin Spies. Kevin Spies. Kevin Spies. Still get my name wrong. It's okay. Yeah, I, once in a while, I call you Georges. How many people still call you Georges? Uh, too many. Too many. Um, we have a lot of topics to cover today. We got one, a lot to get into. One being, you know, obviously we always start off with Cavaliers hoops. Yes. You know, we had a game tonight. Unfortunately... You know, we did, you know, drop drop one to the Miami Heat. You know. We did. I'll tell you what, though. Being in that building for the first time, the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, it felt like a rocket in there. It was a playoff atmosphere game. It was a. It felt like a playoff game. Did it feel like a playoff it, game to you or not? It definitely no? did. Moondog, our, our mascot, Moondog but, you know, he was, he was peeing on the other team's sneakers and stuff. You know, he gets in that little doggy, you know, position that he does, Moondog. <laughs> Um, he also did a great wrestling thing. He he uh, at halftime they had like um, Austin three sixteen and another Stone guy Cold called Steve Austin. Yeah, they did like a Stone Cold thing when, during one of the timeouts, and then he even did uh, he even did Shawn Michaels at the end. You know, I was never really a big wrestling guy. Really? Well, you know, my mom always told me she was like George. I do not want you watching wrestling because the day you try and use one of those wrestling moves on me, I'm really going to whoop you. So that See, was kind of the end I came of up in an era where every single person I know got suspended for doing the suck it. Yeah. Oh, dude. And I, but I even liked wrestling even before then. It like, was X-Pac, right? X-Pac and um, Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, those guys. Great to watch on TV. Probably not the best role models, but <laughs> they were everybody's role models. If you were born in the 90s yes. and late 80s yes or no i agree uh hulk hogan was my was my role model speaking of role models um I, at the game today you had a, a very nice young fan who had number 20 painted on his face yeah. sitting next to me wonderful cute little boy i forget his name he was like five years old i think it was his first first Cavs game i, I like forget you know I forget that that happens to you guys that you have little kids that look up to you like you're gods. You're their role models. Yeah, it's it's actually crazy to think that, you know, someone would ever want to look up to someone like me who wears a green cardigan on, uh, <laughs> what, what's today, on Wednesday, on Wednesday yeah. nights. Did um, your stylist put this together? Yeah, or is this, no, this is this is all G. Hey. Um, no, it was, a, it was a cool atmosphere tonight, you know. Yeah. Obviously, uh, I try to give, you know, friends and, and family, uh, shout out my buddy Sully. You know, who was uh, originally from Methuen, Massachusetts, uh, a.k.a. the Merrimack Valley. Yeah. Um, he had known somebody, so they came in, dropped in. It was uh, his mom and uh, her son, and, and they. Uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't bring him a win. But, you Great know, game. we are down bodies, but yeah. we're playing uh, – we're, we're playing some some good basketball, and I think we're trending in the right direction. And there's one thing that I want to make clear, and I made it clear on my Instagram. Okay. Okay. Um, and on, you know, Cavs post game, Karis LeVert for sixth man of the year. I'm starting the campaign now. I don't want to hear anything from anybody else. Karis LeVert has been balling, and he deserves to be in the conversation. Yeah. You guys aren't even talking about him. He deserves to be in the conversation. I, I, I didn't even check to see how many he had tonight, but he impacts the game in so many different ways. You know, it's kind of like the old coach's adage that it's like the player that does everything. He seems to be that guy. He just does it all. He rebounds. He defends. He had some, like, timely uh, steals at the, in, in the second, in the second half. Knocking down tray balls, getting to the rim, dishing. I think he found you on that three yeah. that you hit uh, in, the, in the end of the fourth quarter. The guy is just an impressive basketball player. So Not getting enough credit because, you know, yeah. people always, you know, like to label Karras as a scorer yeah. and someone that, you know, is just specifically in there to score. And sometimes that's what people think the role of a six man is. But Karras, a.k.a. Yeah. Speed Demon, because when you see him running – down the court, he takes off gazelle. like a gazelle. 
Um, he's been up around eight, nine, ten, twelve. He had twelve assists tonight. He's really been doing a great job, you know, facilitating for us. Yeah. And uh, like I said before, I don't think it goes without saying he deserves to be in the six man of the year conversation. I haven't heard it enough, so I'm putting it out there. Karis Levert, six man of the year. You heard it here first. And but, does that make you seventh man? Because can we give you the – let's start a petition to make you seventh man of the year. No, I, see, that's when you when you shout someone out, you can't, like, double back to the <laughs> oh, new. Oh, I, that's I only I, shout people out so that I can benefit myself. That's really, that's really unbecoming of you, <laughs> Kevin. But anyway. Um, I thought that's how it worked. Moving on, we have a, a big road trip coming up. We travel to the luxurious, sunny state of – Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Yes. Now Don't it's you basically. Know, roll the boat. Minnesota. We did, we did beat the Timberwolves. You did. The last time that we played them. And remember when I told you about Anthony Edwards driving to the rim and oh, hitting geez. me in the knee and that I had to step up and foul him because things happen when you Quick. don't foul him before he takes off which we'll get to that because we have something i want to show you do we have um, it we do we have we don't the tape? have a, we 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 have the tape but we okay. should let's wait to get to it okay. let's wait all right, all right, all right. um yes that man is a bad bad man yeah. how do you like okay like even tonight you you got switched on to and not even switched on you just picked up jimmy butler so yeah. like in back-to-back back-to-back games you you're going to be guarding jimmy butler and at times, Anthony Edwards. Is there ever times where you're one, being honest, a little bit like apprehensive, no, no, or two, no, no, is no. there ever a time where like maybe with an older player, maybe it wouldn't be Anthony Edwards, but like an older player, maybe Butler, where you're like, you have an introspective moment where you're like, holy shit, I'm guarding LeBron James. See, this is why this is why we call this podcast the bench sheet. Okay. Because Kevin. You know, being a normal Samaritan guy yes. that scored 34 points in his uh, men's league game with running a running clock. clock. Correct. These are the thoughts that go through his head. Yes. While I'm out there, you know, fighting for my life to keep these in front, these guys in front of me so that, you know, people on Twitter don't, you know, crucify me about telling me that I have bad defense and or I get subbed out of the game. So, no, I don't have those thoughts. You never once have had never. like a – Well, maybe early on in my career, but yeah. – as of now, no, there's no chance. All I am thinking about is how can I get this guy to get to a spot where I know he will shoot um, a low percentage shot. Yeah. Like that's the mental game that I'm playing. But I like how you think like that. Like that's the mental yeah. game that you're playing. So when you go out there, you'll be like, "Oh my God, no, oh bro. my God, it's Jimmy, <laughs> it's Jimmy Butler, it's Jimmy Butler, and like, dude, I, Marquette, Marquette, dude." And I, now that I know that you're thinking like that. I don't think it's like fanboying. I think it's like, it's kind of like you get to a moment where you're like, whole, okay, this is going to sound ridiculous. And I, I'm prefacing with how ridiculous it's going to sound. All I ever wanted to do growing up was to be a varsity basketball coach. That's all I ever wanted to do. That was the dream. Time out. Here we go again with, you know, Kevin and. Making it about me? No, sports involving Oh, Kids. youth sports, yes. I'm yeah, a big youth sports, youth sports guy. Sports. Big youth sports okay, guy. Okay, so sue me. Big I like youth sports. Big youth sports guy. Um, <laughs> you will find him on Saturdays uh, at 6 a.m. Yes. at the local ice hockey rink watching uh, Bantam 2s. Not true. I only go to high school games, which makes it sound worse. Okay, there, you know, I'm digging myself in a hole. The point is, there were times where I'd be in the middle of coaching a game and just for a split second have an introspective thought like, man, you're here. You're coaching a varsity basketball game. People are here watching this team. Yeah. I thought that's pretty cool. But I, I guess you're too cool for that. I guess you're way too cool to have an introspective moment where you're just like, I'm in the NBA. I'm playing. Don't. Okay. Don't do that. Because well, I, I respect everybody at every single level. But what I'm saying is when you're paid and asked to do a job you gotta get it done. as a professional, you can't be over here walking in starry-eyed because guess what? You're thinking about everything that you're not supposed to be thinking about. So to answer your question here on the bench seat, I am not starry-eyed about any player that I go up against. Honestly, Once and I think all. Pac-Man Jones said it best. He's like, I don't like people helping other people up. I'm going out there and I'm trying to destroy you. Friend or not friend? Hero or not hero? I mean, that that's just I fuck this. how the cookie crumbles. And you do get out there and uh, you compete. And speaking of, you mentioned Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, um, 
I, I didn't ask you about this after the game. I want to ask about it yeah. live. A lot of people are going to jump in about you taking a layup at the end of that game. Can you please explain why that was the right play to make with like five seconds left on the clock? Yeah, I mean, at that point, you know, we were kind of stalled out and I probably could have taken a contested three. And if I missed, that means the game is over, right? Um, but what I was thinking is if I could race to the rim, yes, I, George Niang, a.k.a. the G-Wagon, <laughs> race to the rim. I said it. And, and you get did. A, and you get, get a quick, quick two while the other team is thinking, let's not give up any threes. That gives us a chance, you know, with 3.7 seconds on the clock. Sometimes you have a timeout, but we used that for a challenge and it was yep. unsuccessful. And, you know, you get the points, right? Rather yes. than take the risk of making a three and trying to tie it up, and now you, there's you take the points, and then we get a chance to maybe get a steal or foul, and we foul, and it gives us a chance to maybe they miss the first free throw. But I think every NBA team or any team at any level, like when you coach the high school, should have an end of game full court play for a three pointer, and we did. We've gone over it, it, it and it, it was almost great. had a chance. Darius Garland had a contested double pump. Three that hit off the front of the rim, and by know. the way, wouldn't have been contested if he didn't. I don't. They, there was a bobble yeah, on the exchange. A, you know. Not saying he bobbled it, but that was really impressive. How quick you guys got into that. So shouts to your coaching staff for getting yeah. that guys, getting you guys prepared, and then you guys being prepared to run it and thinking on your feet. But yes, what it does is it extends the game. The game doesn't end because really, it, like you said, if you shoot it and miss it, game's over. Yeah. But if you get two, a lot of things can happen, and you guys got your shot to tie it. It bounced off the front of the rim. Yeah. The thing that I've realized is that you just want to give yourself a fighting chance. chance. And uh, we gave ourselves a fighting chance. The shot didn't go in, but you know, you live to fight another day. You got to have amnesia in the NBA and we and lost, are. but we got to get get it together and, and focus on what we have next. Um speaking of the Cavaliers, uh Mitchell with the nasal fracture, Ooh. which sounds horrible. Uh, oh. how, how on the inside, how are things going with him? Is he in oh, good spirits? You know, I mean, that's, I, I, and is he going to come back as a spider mask? I don't know, but that would be pretty creative tough, yeah. if he did. Yeah, the spider. Yeah, um, yeah, that's tough when you're uh, Donovan Mitchell and you know Tristan on his first game back from, and then you catch an elbow from him. So <laughs> what's back from? Well, what's you from? know. Oh no, I don't. Can you? No, he, <laughs> You know what I'm, you guys know what I'm saying, and he came back still strong and caught with up. his elbow and the nose. And I just remember Donovan being down. He's like, "No, no, no, I'm straight." And his nose was like crooked. I was like, "Nah, you are You're not, not good." Straight. Yeah, <laughs> that nose is jacked up. Yeah, but it's all good. You know, um, he wouldn't. He's not going to be the first player to play with the mask, and he's not going to be the last. Um, the all black Teflon mask with your all black jerseys is going to be a tough look. Um, Speaking of tough looks and the letter T, my um, my transitions are on point tonight. My transitions are really good. Speaking of the letter T, um, you got another ten thousand dollars, or however much money you get, no, twenty five hundred. Uh, another technical foul on Mister Bang Bang George Nang. Explain to us what happened. Why'd you lose your cool? Honestly. <laughs> I'm going to try, see the I'm gonna life try and you know, simplify this in the easiest way possible. Yeah. You know, I play with a lot of emotion, and I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Yes. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I feel like there should be some leeway. You know, I wasn't clapping, at the, but I felt like, you know, someone had smacked my hand after my follow through, which, you know, is legal, I think. But what if someone slaps another person's finger after they, and they break their finger? Yeah. You know, but anyways, that goes without saying, you know, I was kind of barking and I don't think it was anything crazy, but I was clapping like my hand like this as if like he smacked my hand. Yeah. And that warranted a technical foul. Because I will not comment any further because I do not want to lose any more money. <laughs> and Kevin baited me into this. Can we get a, we need to get like a, um, a bar graph. And you know those bar graphs for fundraisers that like color up the way. Yeah. Oh, we don't worry. For how wherever, much money. That, wherever that money goes, <laughs> they're getting me for uh, every penny. But that being said, technicals happen. Um, you know, we're gonna keep a tally on, and I'm gonna try and refrain from getting technicals. Um, so moving forward, yeah, moving on. That was 
that really brought down my mood. But I'm sorry. Let's let's bring it up. Um, you did get a new teammate. Well, I guess a new teammate kind of um, joined the squad, joined playing recently. Marcus Morris Sr., yes. Philadelphia's very own. Tough. I mean, just seems like one of the league's tough guys, really. What's it like been playing with him? You've played against him for years. Yeah. And so what's it like? What's the difference there? What's it like, oh, like playing with him? Whenever you're him? playing against – Marcus Morris or the Morris twins for yeah, sure. Them. You know, I was lucky enough to be in Utah when uh, you know, his brother, yeah, Markeith was in LA and then he was in uh, LA also with the Clippers. Yeah. And uh those dudes are are tough dudes. Those yeah. are dudes that you want on your side. And Marcus has been great, come in seamless, um, make shots. Um, knows how to play, savvy veteran, yeah. and a, a great leader. I think the crazy part is, you know, when people on the internet try and say things about these people like, oh, they, they can't do this, they can't play, da 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 da. Yeah. It's like, this dude has so much game. Yeah. And I think he showed that in the first game that we had back in Indiana. Like, from couch to court, came out balling. Yeah. And not skip the and beat. And, and was in there like doing his routine, headphones in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sick. Got out there like it was like I ain't breaking a sweat. And that's why I was really impressed by it. And he's just been he's been tremendous. And uh we're really we're really lucky to have him. But, you know, me and him do have our differences because he is a Kansas Jayhawk. He is. So you guys have bad blood going way back. No, yeah, I didn't. I never played against him, but <laughs> no, you know that's, that's something um, that you like to stir it up a little. He's bit. yeah. He's one of the. Uh, I'm sure you guys will be talking your smack this uh, this March Madness, and we're gonna get to some some madness picks. Yeah. But um, yeah, just being being close to Philly and and seeing you know him in Philly too for a while, wasn't yeah, he? He was doing a great um, job. Yeah, that. it's cool to see. Speaking of Philly, Embiid uh, coming back. Just I want to ask you, like knowing. Being a friend of Embiid's, first off, and knowing how important he is to the Sixers team, like what's what do you think can happen with this Sixers team if they get Embiid back? You think they can make a little run, or you don't really want to? Yeah, I mean it? they're a dangerous team, and I know Joel's telling them, "Just get me out of the playing <laughs> game, and I'll get you to the finals." No, Joel's great. Um, you know, I hope I hope that he's <laughs> healing up. The rest of the interview. With I, ho Joel I hope Lewis. that he's I hope that he's healing up well because you know. It's unfortunate that he's, he's had to he had to deal with that injury, yeah. which brings me into you know another. another another topic where you know we talked about it earlier is having these guys that want to make All NBA having to play sixty five games. I think you know Adam Silver, you might have to do something about that moving forward. I am not in the run for all NBA, so that doesn't yeah. matter to me, but I will be going for the award. Yes. Of eighty two games. It. Knock on wood. How many wood. times have you done that in your career? I've played the COVID year, seventy two games. I played every game, but you know, these last two years, because I caught COVID and then yeah. I had a little uh foot injury uh last year. I didn't get all eighty two, but I'm going for it this year. We just finished our sixty ninth game tonight. And uh, we got 13 more to go. Dude, you're the home stretch. But with that being said, um, you know, Joel and the Sixers, uh, they're hanging on and they become real dangerous, you know, they if are. he's, you know, especially if, the he, if he's going to come back. But speaking of injuries, I do want to give a shout out. I know we're a little comedic yeah. in, you know, on this podcast, but I do want to give a shout out to Asar Thompson. Um, yeah. I know he was diagnosed, you know, with blood clots. Asar, me and Kevin, we wish you nothing but the Love best. To you. Um, speedy recovery. Speedy recovery to and, you. And, uh, you know, the, the game will miss you, but, you know, we're thinking and then uh, praying for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, get well soon to him for sure. That's a, that's a tough one and a scary one. Um, all right, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's stick with basketball. Okay. Or do you do you want to stick with basketball? Or I know you're a big football guy. You you came in here. You were talking about my Patriots. There's a I'm couple things to I want to cover. All right, if that's the if that's the way you want to go. Okay, let's go football for a little bit. Then okay. we'll get back to our brackets. Are we going to talk about our g guy? Well, he uh, might be doing the dirty bird. 
He had a chain on before in oh, Minnesota. God. He took that icy chain off, and now he's going to be doing Dude. the Jamal Kirk. Williams Dirty Bird. Oh, fuck. Kirk Williams in Atlanta? Kirk Cousins. I mean, Kirk Cousins. I said Kirk Williams. Yeah. Also, I think I said Kurt Williams. I didn't. Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, I'm going to send you my Venmo. Can I get some? Some what? Money. <laughs> Good Dude, God. That guy has I think made he's almost touched half a, half half a billion. billion. Yeah. He has made, whoever his agent is. Deserves, he's made half yeah. a billion. And guess what? His wife picks out his clothes. That is true. That's amazing. They have that that that's, that QB that's flipping amazing. Did you watch the QB documentary? Uh, I watched every second of it. That was tremendous. Um, speaking sidebar, they're having one coming out uh, in production now. That's receiver. So it's the same concept, but <laughs> few receivers. Is there any NBA players you would love to see on that? If they did an NBA side of that, uh, think across the league. Who do you think would just be interesting or maybe controversial? I mean, I, I think I'd he, love to see Kyrie. Yeah, Ky Kyrie, he he would be he would definitely be up there. I would definitely like to see Nikola Jokic. Oh yes, that, yes. that would be a tremendous one. Especially just because you just see someone that's all about their team, and it just shows up to work and does his job. It's Dude. like the um, you know the Chinese farmer, like, yeah. oh, you broke. You, you know, my son broke his leg. Oh, thank God, because the military is going to take him. We'll, uh, I don't know. We'll yet. see. We'll yeah, see. We'll yeah. see. Oh, you got all those fortunes. That must be awesome. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. Oh, the fortunes. Yeah. <laughs> he seems it's like, like, oh, you, Nicole is like, oh, you lost last night, but, you know, the other team lost, so you're still in first. Oh, well, well, we'll, okay, see. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and then he wins the championship, and yeah. he's like, oh, I'm excited to go home. I don't, I don't want to play basketball. Yeah. He was like, this was the shortest offseason. It wasn't the greatest. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, but he does everything right. So but it's back like, to Kirk Cousins. Okay, Kirk. So How much did he get? I don't know what he got. I think another plus. Yeah, I think it was like 117 or something like that, 115. Great job. Um, Kirk landing another big deal. All of a sudden, Atlanta looks like they are, I mean, the odds on them totally shifted. Another quarterback landed in another place by the name of Russell Wilson, and the odds did not shift at all in Pittsburgh. Any thoughts on why? I mean, okay, I get maybe he's not the most likable guy for whatever reason. He played pretty well last year. Like yeah. I think that the Pittsburgh has a shot of being pretty solid with him as a QB. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna put it to you like this: uh, Denver has is a pretty historic franchise, right? Terrell yeah. Davis, John Elway, mm -hmm. you know, Peyton Manning. Yeah, they they've had some dudes, squads, yeah, real dudes. Um, Pittsburgh has had Ben Roethlisberger. You know, Jerome Bettis, Cordell Stewart. Oh yeah, stud, '90s name. Nice, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's some some dudes out there yeah. that you know they expect to perform. And recently, the Pittsburgh Steelers have not been able to find mm -mm. a quarterback that fits them. So yeah. no pressure, Russell Wilson. But that's a lot of pressure that you're walking into. And, and then, by the way, another thing the, we must talk about: the trade wire was hot. I don't know if you can even him. call it a fucking, excuse my language, trade. When you, we, we, we gave him Justin, we gave the Pittsburgh Steelers Justin Fields for a six rounder. So, what was the six rounder? Six rounder is nothing. Well, so, Tom Brady anyway, was a seventh rounder. Yeah. So. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Hopefully, but, um, you guys get tough for me because yeah. I was someone that was a proponent of Justin Fields. I thought, again, I'm obviously not a football GM, but I thought we could really, really stack our roster with trading that number one pick and keeping Justin Fields, who I thought was a solid, okay quarterback, I guess. Uh, the experts think different. We still did a lot with our roster. We got Keenan Allen from San Diego, who's a 1,200-yard receiver last yes. year, along with DJ Moore, along with Cole Komet and DeAndre Swift. We have offensive weapons now. So it's like now Caleb Williams is looking a little – I might start painting my fingernails because oh. uh, Caleb Williams, that's what he does. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm sad to see Fields go. I'm glad he's landing in Pittsburgh. Uh, my but wife, there's going to be a little controversy in there Pittsburgh, is. right? That puts a lot more pressure on Russell Wilson because, Russell, guess what? You are going to have to come in and start you know, tossing yep. some TDs. Yes, in there. it's yep. going to be a competition. And then guess what? If he doesn't, that's a perfect – segment for yeah. Justin Fields to slide in yep. and do what he does and hopefully they both get a warm welcome. I don't see it coming out that way. But one yeah. of them 
will have to stay, and it's survival of the fittest over there in Pittsburgh. But can we talk about Chicago maybe taking Caleb Williams? Do you like the idea? Like, what, where? I mean, you have to take Caleb Williams. It doesn't matter. Like, he's one of those prospects where if you're a GM and you don't take the consensus number one, whether you don't think he's the right pick or not, if you don't take him, you will never live it down. Well, my friend, let's take a look at history here. You yes. guys do not have a great track record of what we like to call drafting. Good quarterbacks. Absolutely. <laughs> For years. Yeah. In fact, there's this one. I, just, I remember it like it was yesterday. My dad pulling me aside. I might have been 10 years old. And him going, Kev, the Bears are finally going to get the quarterback they've needed for the last 20 years. His name is Cade McNown. He's out of UCLA. He's such a badass. In the middle of a Rose Bowl game, he puked, got done puking, and threw a touchdown. And ever, I was convinced Cade McNown was going to be our quarterback. Yep. He was horrible. Since then, we've had Rex Grossman. Uh, J, um, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler, who I thought was pretty good for a while, but he wasn't drafted. He signed it's just been a plethora of qbs after qbs after qbs we've passed on mahomes we passed on deshaun watson you took mitchell trubisky mitchell trubisky great, so great work and well let's moving on to my team the patriots yeah what do you think they're gonna do because right now mox are saying they're taking your boy Jaden daniels out of lsu what do you think who, about that? you know is a scrambling and passing quarterback right yes i don't know if you have stats for me but i do have stats would give you like to hear stats. some stats give us some stats last year lsu quarterback who was a heisman trophy winner mm. threw for 3800 yards 40 touchdowns and More. four interceptions this is only 12 games remember folks 4800 3,800, 3, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions. Mm. On top of that, again, in only 12 games, on top of that, 1,100 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. That is, if those were numbers in a 17-game NFL season, that'd be like the greatest season of all time. This and is in 12 games. there were some rumors, there were some whispers. I heard there were some whispers that his camp didn't want – to be drafted, didn't want him to be drafted by New England, but guess what? Tough luck, too bad. Yeah. We're taking you, pal, and that's all that's going to be said. And we signed Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, I've heard from close friends, great dude. Good dude? Great dude. Heard he'll be a great New mentor. coach. Has, it's got to be weird to not see your boy Bill on the uh, sideline this year. Bill, Bill, we thank you <laughs> for everything that you've done. Because you know what? If it wasn't for you, No one Tom would have Brady, cut off sleeves, Rob hoodies. Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman, Robert Kraft, you wouldn't have brought a young, chubby teenager Skinny. from Methuen, Massachusetts. So much joy in watching those Super Bowl parades. So thank you again. Yeah, clap it up. Um, that's pretty awesome. Okay, we just covered football. That's what we did uh, because that's what we do in the show. We yeah, cover uh, sports. Yep, we're here so for the sports. We're here for the sports. Let's get into a little bit of NCAA basketball. My favorite time of the year, March Madness. This is your favorite time of the year. And might I say. I get a little excited. Well, you should get excited because your team, the Iowa State Cyclones, yes, they everybody, do. have a real fighter's chance of making it out of their bracket. Um, I'm gonna, I want to do a round one rapid fire. Did you fill out a bracket yet? Yeah, I did. You did. Okay. Well, let's see if you can go by memory then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a game and you got to give me um, – the answer right away. Okay. Okay, and we'll go back and mark all these down, and we'll see who has more games. I'll do. You'll do the um, east and west, and I'll do the south and midwest. Okay. okay? So you're east, west first. Ready? Yeah. UConn Stetson. You know what? Faster. Go Huskies. FAU Northwestern. Dusty May is taking FAU to the next round. San Diego UAB. I will never, ever, ever. Let UAB advance after what they did to me my junior year of upsetting us when we were a two seed. So looks like San Diego State, you are Winning. moving on. Okay, Auburn Yale. You Is guys, this so you guys know upset. why I wore this cardigan i was wondering why you, you guys know why i wore this cardigan because yale is going to the top you believe yale, yale. yale next round go bulldogs Auburn. you're out of your mind byu to kens you know i was in utah for a little bit of time byu go kooks illinois moorhead state this one it's you know that shannon kid he's spectacular lucky lefty um 
Illinois. Illinois. Washington State Drake. Shake hmm. that ass, Drake. Not shake that ass. You me. know what? I you know what? Why not? Let 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 the team from the Missouri Valley move on. You know, Washington State, you guys haven't really had a heck of a you know, I don't know how do I say this? Well, you guys haven't been to the NCAA tournament in a while, and I think that Drake is probably gonna get them. They're hot. To you. Yeah, they're yeah. hot right now. A team that wins their conference tournament is always hot. Yeah. Okay. Um I lost my I, I think ISU uh, yeah, State, IS, Iowa State, ISU Dakota and State. South Dakota State, Obviously, the battle ISU. of the Midwest. Coach TJ Otzelberger of the Iowa State Stuck. Cyclone used to coach at San South Dakota State. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And those Jackrabbits are going to be Jackrabbiting on home. home. Okay. That's the East Bracket. North Carolina and Wagner. Wagner won. Ooh. Howard. I love what Wagner did. They actually beat Howard. No. In their conference tournament, they beat oh, my yeah. beloved Merrimack College Warriors. Shout out, Coach Joey Gallo. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to have to go with the Tar Heels. Michigan State, Mississippi State, 8 9. Ooh. That's a tough one. You know what? Tom Izzo Izzy. does have a great track record in the NCAA tournament, but Stark Vegas, Mississippi State is moving on. You're out of your mind. St. Mary's Grand Canyon. This is one people are looking at. You know what? Um, so I had a general manager. In Utah, his name was Dennis Lindsay. He had a son named Jake Lindsay that I played against in college. He coaches at Grand Canyon, and ah. they've been saying some good stuff about what's been going on. Okay. So, uh, you know what? Picking it. The people in Arizona are going to be partying. The Grand Canyon. Spoken. Grand Canyon. I, I, I would have said Utah. I have no idea where that school is. Okay, here's my upset. Alabama, Charleston. Give it to me. I don't give a piss about nothing but the tide. <laughs> Bama rolls them. Roll tide. Okay. Clemson, New Mexico. Um, you know what? After what I saw, I was a huge Eddie House fan growing yes. up. After what I saw his son do, and I thought it was special. He kind of has that DNA. Eddie House was doing it for Arizona State. Fork him. I love it. One of New my Mexico best friends, is moving on. One of my best friends coached uh, him all through high school. It was on Bibby's staff yeah. at uh, Shadow Mountain. Said the kid's a great kid. Uh, I've been following him from afar. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Great story. Um, thanks so much. Baylor and Colgate. Baylor and Colgate. Come oh, on, say it. You know I wore my cardigan for a reason. <laughs> and Colgate. <laughs> Colgate is not beating Baylor. You're out of your mind. Dayton, Nevada. This Did one, you say Nevada or Nevada? You know, this could be uh, a toss-up here. Okay. Um, I wasn't really feeling you know, what the the Flyers were doing. So, you know what? This is going to be another upset, and I am taking the Wolfpack. Okay. Arizona and Long Beach State. Yeah, this one isn't even going to be close. Long no. Beach State, you guys had a great season, yeah. but it comes to an end. But, hey, you can get to the beach faster. Um, okay. Should I read, or do you want to read these? Pass that over here. Okay. If you get any text from my wife, just ignore Okay. Okay, who do we got? We okay. Got the first I'm going quick. First round we have Houston versus Longwood. Houston. Without question. Okay. Let me be close. The eight nine game. We have the Aggies of Texas A and M. Or we have the fighting Fred Hoyberg. Shout out Fred Hoyberg. Coached me three years yeah. in college. Fred, I love you. I would pick Nebraska. I don't know what this idiot I'm is. I'm gonna pick, pick Nebraska definitely. Uh, they're hot. You got the Japanese Steph Curry. Yes. You got Fred Hoiberger. Kai Say Tomonaga. Yeah. Yeah. And incredible college coach. So without question, Nebraska. And then this one probably will be um, a game. I'm not so sure. A yeah. lot of people will tune in for. Maybe a little slow paced. Wisconsin, James Madison. I have James Madison. JMU, the Dukes. Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, uh, Wisconsin's been tough in the Big Ten, but F Big Ten's. Teams are suspect in the tournament, and I think James Madison has a lot of seniors, and they're really good this year. So I'm going to go with James Madison. Okay, moving on. We have the fighting Kyle Filipowski's. Hopefully they don't. Yeah. Hopefully they don't storm, storm the court <laughs> in the NCAA tournament. But yes. but they are playing Vermont. Who do you have? Although I like Vermont, I'm going Duke without question. Okay. Now this one, you know, Texas Tech, NC State. Don't answer this. Texas Tech is a Big 12 school. You know, they compete at a high level. Big 12 conference, best conference in uh, in the State. country right now. But NC State, you saw who they had. Baby Zach Randolph. 
Baby Zach Randolph. I think his name is DJ Williams. I was trying to come up. I was trying to think of his last name. I think it's DJ Williams. Yeah, I don't. You know. But anyway, he's a that. lefty. He's a big boy, and he's a killer. And that team just plays tough defense. So I'm going to go with them. I'm going to go NC State. Okay, NC State moving on, and then you have hit me the Kentucky Wildcats yeah. Yeah, versus the, Oakland. The freshmen are going to the freshmen are going to go far. I'm going to go in Kentucky. I'm definitely going really Kentucky. yeah Oakland yeah Kentucky or right. Oakland yes fair enough. Then we have Florida versus the winner of Boise State Colorado Florida. I mean, they're, they're, it's Florida. It's an ACC school. I think they're going to no, take care of No, I, I understand that. And then we have the Hilltoppers down at Western Kentucky. They've been fighting. They've been scrapping all year. But yeah, they, they are going to run into a well-oiled machine in Marquette. Marquette's getting Tyler Kolek back, who I think is going to be a killer uh, in this tournament. And I think also has a chance of being an NBA player. He's a really he runs a pick and roll really well. Can score, tough kid. I got Marquette. I got Marquette going far. Okay, fair enough. Midwest bracket. Hit me. We have Purdue versus Grambling. Purdue. Or Purdue. Mont Zach Eady's just gonna yeah, take he's gonna, full he's control. Gonna hammer, yeah. You know, it's honestly crazy. Guys, and, I, seven, and I don't mean any disrespect to him, but when you roll out someone that is the size of you know, some would be compared to Sas and Sasquatch yeah. and can shoot a jump hook and IE dunk block shots. Uh, you know, Montana or Grambling State is going to have a tough time. So I completely time. agree with you that this one here, uh, the TCU go Horn Frogs, Frogs against the Utah State Aggies. Shout out to Sam Merrill. I got Utah State winning this. Who do you have? I'll go with Utah State only because of Sam Merrill and only because I like watching him play basketball. That guy has never seen a shot he didn't like. And I don't mean that in a bad way. People say that in a bad way. That kid fires him up confidently. Yeah. And it's fun to watch. If the kid I, has balls the size of Utah. I would say. You wow. Like that? Yeah, thanks. I don't know if he'd, he'd call him those. But he, well, but. I've never seen him, but I'm – one one hundred percent. You know, we have the Aggies moving on, and then the next one is Gonzaga Zags. versus McNeese. Oh, Zags got to make yeah. Zags got to make a lot of people are picking McNeese here as their as their uh, Cinderella. I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Zags experience are going to take over. You got Mark Few is a great coach, and Fun. then four versus thirteen. Yeah, Kansas has had a bunch of injuries. Hunter Dickinson. Yeah. Uh, not sure if he's playing, but they got a guy who is built like a brick shit house in KJ Adams. Okay, killer. Yes, he is. So I'm and gonna. And they're go playing Samford. Yeah, Samford. This could be an upset. What are your thoughts? Maybe. No, I guess no. Nope, the Kansas. Big Twelve moves on. KU yeah. rock chalk. Um, South Carolina versus Oregon. <coughs> Let me chime in here. Dana okay. Altman. I don't know what he does during the year, but in March he turns up. Um, yeah, this is a tough one. I'm going to go South Carolina. Go Cox. Go Cox. <laughs> okay. Okay, then we're going to have Creighton. Creighton's moving on. Full stop. Not. Creighton's moving on. But we're not even going to mention that they okay. play Akron. We're go. in Ohio. I know we're in Ohio. Akron's a great story. But you're a Creighton, so, Creighton you're a Big East out. basketball is a different beast. Okay, year. and then we have, listen, I'm going to have to go on a tangent here because okay. Texas – is playing Colorado State. <coughs> Colorado State, last night, fun fact. Yes. Held Virginia scoreless for 10. Dude. For 10 game minutes. Yeah, I think it was like 52 real-time minutes. minutes. That's what? insane. Honestly, I'm just going to tell you this. I will not ever be attending a Virginia basketball watch party because my eyes will bleed. It's almost as bad as watching... Iowa football play yeah. and score. Like, honestly, I'm not even going to lie to you. Caitlin Clark and her team should shoot up for the <laughs> Iowa football team because and maybe they need also help Virginia. scoring. Caitlin yeah. Clark, you've scored more than enough points, and the Iowa football team, they need your help to score. Virginia's always been a tempoed team. They always play slow. They play tough. Yeah. They make boring. you grind it out. It's ugly. It's boring. But they've won a national championship. So Okay, uh, but Colorado State them. or Texas. Are you hook them or are you rolling – I'm going to go Texas, I think, on this one over Colorado State. Okay. I think Texas, yeah, Texas will handle them. And then we have St. Peter's. Okay. My, now. My favorite player in the tournament. Who's that? Dalton. 
Yeah, what's his last name? I think it's Nat. There's a lot of uh, there's. I don't know, but he is big. He is strong. He can shoot. He can dribble. And guess what? Yeah. If you don't step up in the lane, he might just dunk on you. Unfortunately, he's going up against uh, a player by the name of Roy Clark at St. Peter's Peacocks University, who is my former player at John Dewey High School. Is this the, your upset? This is – I'm picking it out of um, love, huh? love. I have the St. Peter's Peacocks and Roy Clark moving on. He's the first player I've ever coached that's playing in the NCAA tournament. Moving on. And you know beating, what they. Uh, you know what they say. Don't. Tennessee. Don't. Well, don't I'm not pick, betting. Don't pick yeah. with emotion. Um, don't okay. Bet with emotion. That was good. I like that. That was fun. Uh, we'll do round two next. Well, next week we'll probably do round eight or whatever it is. The round of eight. Um, moving forward, we do have a couple things here uh, in this segment. I like to call the past week on the internet or this past week on the internet, whichever one you'd like to yes. uh, call. Maybe we get a lo- logo. We should have a logo that says like this past week and like. Maybe we can do it like that. Um, anyway, we'll talk to Edelmate about that. Um, first up, what video do we have first here on uh, this week's the internet? Our guy, I just wanted to get your take on this, dude. I mean, he plays for your boy, Fred Hoiberg. I mean, look at this shot. Talk about a quick release. Oh, what? my God. I mean, like that you is. said, they call him the Japanese Steph Curry. Dude, this he guy. He shakes, he bakes, he and really... he just has range. Look at that. He doesn't even follow through. He just flicks it in the air, and it's like it goes in. It's a thing of beauty, and I can't wait to see it in the NCAA tournament. Um, Fred, Fred, I don't know where you found this guy, but he is sensational. He's sensational, and Fred must have gone to Japan, no? I mean, he must have gone there. Look at that crafty little left-hand scoopy scoop layup, and then he cut through the lane. You know, uh, I think it's awesome because he's probably throwing people off because, you know, the eye test. I'm sure people aren't really thinking that this is the type of energy that he's going to bring. And he just brings it. It's it's unreal. crazy. So and fun if to we're watch. talking about players to watch in the NCAA tournament, the Japanese Steph Curry, Kaisei Tomonaga at Nebraska, yeah, killer. And you know what? It's partly because we're missing out on our boy Robbie Avila. Yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar got absolutely snubbed. Bobby, shout out to our boy Bobby. We got to have him on the pod. I think Bobby, if you're listening. Please. We need to get you on the pod. Uh, if you're not, if you don't go in the NIT and you have some time, we'd love to get you out here in Cleveland uh, to get on the pod. Uh, you don't have to bring the Rex specs. You do just have to bring, bring Rex. Just bring yourself, bring your game because we're gonna have you play Kevin one on one. Okay, down, down. Okay, who's next? Oh Sheesh. my! God. <laughs> like, I mean, he like punched him in the face, and this is what I'm talking about. When you were what talking do you to me, do? you have to get to these guys before their launch pad, and it's unfortunate because John Collins, you are a great guy. But you you got, really are an awesome guy. Wrong place, wrong time. You got hit with a – He's sad. Is that is he hurt at the bottom no, of that? I, I think he, he was sad? concussed, so hopefully yeah. speedy recovery, uh, John. But that was – This is that just – That was ferocious. That, sick. Look where he takes off from. He takes off from the elbow. Oh. And just bangs it home. Look at my ex-college teammate over there, Monte Morris, <laughs> going crazy. That, honestly, Jeez, that's crazy. I mean, and he's if, at, and he's had a plethora of these. This kid is special when it comes to transition basketball, and he can fly. Yes, he can fly. If you're on, if you're on the team that got dunked on, and you see that, are you making a face? Are you going, oh, when he dunks it? or Are you trying to hold it back? Uh. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's kind of a natural reaction. <laughs> but, you know, one time I was playing Anthony uh, Edwards when we were in Philly. And, you know, he's full of life, has, yeah. a, has a ton of personality. Yeah. And uh, he hit me with the move. I was like, oh, man, I thought you only did that going left. He's like, shit, I've been working on my game. <laughs> Dude, so I, just wa- I just think that kid is, like, the coolest. Oh, he's awesome. He you know, seems he, like he's he awesome. Did a great, he did a great job in that movie. Um, yeah. We talked about last week. He killed it. Yeah, he did a great job. Great personality. Even better dunk. Yeah, that awesome. was that was impressive. I want to see your take on this. Let's say you're taking a shot and the other coach does something like this. Go ahead. He had a shot and he hadn't made one. I didn't want him to feel good about himself going to the bench. Gary asked me about that a month ago, and that's the bench rule. Guys don't shoot shots in front of our bench to go back to their bench to feel good about themselves. So I'm going to ask the guys that contest. The staff's got to do the same. <laughs> Oh, this is thoughts? awesome. You know, Joe Missoula, I think he either played for Bob Huggins and he played for John Beeline. So uh, he's an intense dude. Funny story, you know, this, this right here, here 
is a freshman, George Niang, at the far right. And there is Joe Mazzula in the middle with Mickey Mouse hands on. So would you expect anything less from someone that is wearing Mickey Mouse gloves at a Thanksgiving holiday tournament down in Disney to go <laughs> and contest someone's shots? I, I wouldn't. Couldn't so, believe it. So you know what? I, I'd expect that out of Joe Mazzula. I just thought we should throw it back to this picture. I think it's pretty funny. But I if just, that was me, I may have, like, kicked my leg out and, like, try and let him hit me and see if I could get, get him called for, like, a flagrant foul or something. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe a coach sitting there cold would jump up. And, like, I get the idea of it. Like, hey, we can test. We do it. But a coach doing that seems so crazy to me. Yeah, it's a little out there. Yeah. Um, you know, funny story. We were playing. Uh, we were playing Boston in the second round of the playoffs, mm -hmm. and uh, I got in the game. And you know, I felt insulted when he put their center on me and sent it to go double Joel. It was almost like a slap in the face. Right. You're like, so okay. when I made the three, I don't know if we'll be able to show the clip, but I make the three, and then I'm looking over at the bench, and I'm like yelling at him. And I'm like, you better not ever put your effing center on me ever again. Da 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 da. Like Give from afar, him. though. Yeah. And then I walk by, <laughs> you know, me thinking that I'm getting away with doing like a drive by with like words. I walk by their bench after a timeout. I'm like, are you nuts putting your center on me? He's like, shut the hell up. Missoula did? Yeah. <laughs> he's, just an in he's just an intense dude. Yeah, yeah. I wish he could wear Mickey Mouse. Was it shut the hell up or I, shut the fuck up? Uh, probably. <laughs> I wish he could wear Mickey Mouse gloves on the sideline. That would be incredible if we could watch him contest Royce O'Neal's <laughs> shot with Mickey Mouse gloves. But he's an intense dude. Yeah. He's a great guy. Um, I think it's all in the game. And, yeah. you know, I, I think he just wears his emotions on his sleeve and he's intense. Good for and, him. And he's not apologizing to anybody. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he buys into it. Um, we have one more video here I'd like to get your take on. This is This Week in the Internet. Uh, not so much sports. I just want to get your take on this video. Spend my dollar, parked in a holler, neath the mountain moonlight. We stand for the flag if you don't like it. Hell, we don't care. Hell, there you mm. go. Damn right, America. America. Damn right. You're going to respect us. Damn right. You're going you gonna to respect us. Respect us. Respect us. Don't um, mess okay. with don't us. With us. I uh America. I don't give if, a, I don't give a piss about <laughs> nothing but the tide. If roll this, tide. If this were our duo, I I want to be the guy who doesn't give a piss about the tide, and you're gonna be Drewski in the in the hat. Are you body shaming me right now? No, no, that has nothing. To, you went there. I didn't. Okay. I wanted to be the, okay. You wanted to be the cross-eyed guy. No. Hey, honestly, I've heard a lot of crazy things. Dave Portnoy has him selling those T-shirts. Dude. I don't give a piss about nothing but the Tide, and that guy is profiting from them. I think that's the coolest thing ever. I don't know where you find guys like Alabama. this. Alabama. Is that really where you can find <laughs> yeah, people find. that act like that? <laughs> well, we got to take a trip down we to, Alabama. Go to Alabama. We'll hey, we're announcing our tour Coming up live soon. podcast. Yeah. We'll let you know if there's any locations down in Alabama. Summer uh, coming uh, this summer to you. All right, before we end here, I do want to get a couple of call ins, um, message ins, I should say. This one's for you. He's from, uh, this guy's from MA, from MA which is Massachusetts, yeah. Vucci99. Uh, you've been in Philly. Are you a North Shore beef, beef or a Philly cheesesteak guy? Ooh. What's a North Shore beef? A North Shore is like roast beef. Shout out to Harrison's okay. that recently closed in North End. I've been going there my whole life. But I'm a North Shore roast beef. Is it like guy. wet? It's, What's it like? No, it's like it's a roast beef sandwich. Yeah. You have certain kind of sauces on it. You know, soft bun. You can either have it uh, poppy seed bun or, you know, Ooh. plain. Get some sauce on there. Add some cheese. Usually have like the the fries that have like the zigzags in them. Oh. Uh. Oh, waffle fries? <coughs> no. Like, they're like sticks, but they're like... Oh, I just like about yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cr crinkle. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to be in Philly for two years. There's amazing... Um, there's amazing Philly cheesesteaks there. Shout out D'Alessandro's. Yeah. Shout out Angelo's. But I could never turn my back on my people. Your home, yeah. And that's North Shore beef all day. That's respect. I love that. I never had one. I'd like to have one this summer. Maybe I'll come up to yeah, Boston. Yeah, we'll get you a North Shore beef, pal. Yeah, I would love that, actually. Can we do that? 
Um, okay, Cam Bosch wants to know uh, your thoughts on Kyrie's left-handed game winner. Oh. Okay, so I'll say this right now, and I will not turn my back on it. Kyrie Irving is, in fact, the most skilled NBA player ever. Ever. Yeah. Um, I don't disagree. And a lot of people, like, I had a friend, one of my friends' take was like, oh, that's kind of a lucky shot. He threw up his left hand. I was like, actually, if there's one person in the NBA that I think it's not really luck, it'd be him. Oh, my God. When he God. put that up, it was did, like. Your friend disgusts me, seriously. Yeah, Why well, does he's he have a to loser. be a hater? Yeah, he's a hater. What's his name? State is government. Ryan. You met him. He's the guy that Ryan. came out. Yeah, he's, Honestly, he's a loser. do some research, please. Um, okay, a couple more. We have one more. Um, this is from. Don Don Bird Don Roberto three hundred five. How does George like living in Cleveland? I love and it. Will Kevin ever come out to Cleveland? I'm in Cleveland right now. Yeah, Kevin makes many trips to Cleveland. I do. Um, I love Cleveland. It's awesome. You know, it's a sports town that's hungry. You know, see their sports teams winning. Yeah. So no pressure, but we need to win. Um, and it's it's been awesome. Let me tell you this: when it is 70, 60, 70, and it is sunny. Oh. There's no place like it. I mean, yeah. obviously, winter with the lake effect and it being dark, it, it gets tough sometimes. Windy but, and cold, right? But at the same time, the people have been awesome here, um, yeah. and it's it's been awesome. I, I love Cleveland. Again, the game tonight was so fun watching that game in that environment. It's yeah, like a Cle playoff environment. Hey, they Cleveland yes. rocks. Yeah, it does. Okay, last question that we're going to end here. This is from Anthony. He just got diagnosed with MDS and wants to know if you have any <laughs> – if you have any recommendations for M for MDS, I, he knows you've been diagnosed. <laughs> Wants to know. Oh, MDS is um, miniature <laughs> dinky syndrome. <laughs> it's miniature dinky syndrome. He just got diagnosed, and he knows you've been diagnosed. He wants to know if you honestly, have any, um... my good friend Anthony from <laughs> South. He, um, you know, he's just he's full of it. He and is. the fact that he would even ever try to get on a <laughs> podcast, he's banned. Um, he's banned, yeah. But that's no, all right. We covered a lot of things here. We covered. So the you're NCAA denying tournament. your MDS? I'm not even going to entertain okay. this nonsense. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. You know, we had a great <laughs> segment here. Thank you guys for joining us. We got mm -hmm. to talk about NBA basketball. We like, got to talk about the NFL. Yes. We got to talk about how Caitlin Clark might need to suit up for. The Iowa you know, forego the WNBA draft and, and suit up for the Iowa football team because they need points. Yes. Um, we also got to touch on March Madness. We also need to touch on liking, subscribing, sharing, and subscribing. Yeah. No, do us a favor. Go on there. Subscribe. Help us out. We'd greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the pod, the bench sheet. Um, I'm George Niang. This is Kevin Spees. And we're out.